uh, the distinguished professor of meteorology, one of the top climate scientists in the world. Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. So the federal government is under an obligation to, uh, you know, a whole variety of ways, basically protect us and the planet and the country. And, you know, they have to make decisions all the time based on what you might call risk benefit or cost benefit analyses saying, OK, uh, do we mandate seat belts? How many people's lives will be saved versus what does it cost? Those, those kinds of things. We're all familiar with this. And back during the Obama administration, the, the law required that the administration base decisions about things like you know, tailpipe exhaust or power plant exhaust or, or how much waste could come out of the Koch brothers' uh, uh, refineries uh, on an estimate, a scientifically determined estimate of how much carbon pollution costs society and the world. And the Obama administration uh, estimated that as of 2020, and they were looking forward into the future, that would be around $50 a ton. And they said by 2050, it'll be $82 a ton. So the Trump administration just rolled back a whole bunch of regulations and said that they were doing this based on a brand new assumption of cost, that it's only a dollar a ton, maybe seven at the worst, in terms of the damage of carbon pollution now, and that by 2050, it'll only be $11 a ton. And as a result of this, they're able to get away with all kinds of crazy stuff. This is flat out nuts. Let's ask one of the top climate scientists in the world how this came about, what he thinks about this, and what the implications and practical effect of this will be. With us is Dr. Michael Mann, Distinguished Professor of Meteorology, Director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University, member of the National Academy of Sciences, author of numerous books, including his most recent, The Madhouse Effect. He's also the recipient of the Tyler Prize. His website, Michael Mann with two N's, dot net. And you can tweet him at Michael E. Mann with two N's. Uh, Dr. Mann, welcome back to the program. Uh, what's go what the hell is going on here with this? Yeah, thanks, Tom. It's good to be with you. Well, this isn't surprising, right? Um, it's a, a obvious extension of the bad faith that this administration has demonstrated when it comes to acting on the climate crisis. And one of the tricks uh, that they have used is basically to dismiss the actual damage that's being done by climate change. If you do a cost-benefit analysis and you lowball the effort of the costs, um, obviously it's going to tell you uh, what, in this case, you want to hear, that there's no reason to act. Um, that's the message that the, the current administration, the Trump administration, is trying to convey. And the way they do that is by, in essence, ignoring the damage that's done by climate change, using uh, what's known as um, a, a price on uh, the social cost of carbon um, of $1 to $7. Um, the idea is if you burn a, a ton of carbon, um, they're saying it only does a damage of about $1 to $7 uh, to the economy and uh, to sort of, um, you know, the, the environment. Um, that, that's the, the damage done, when in fact it's at least an order of magnitude higher than that. As you mentioned, the Obama administration used a more conventional uh, estimate of the social cost of carbon of about $50, rising to $80. Um, ExxonMobil had an even higher estimate than the Obama administration. That's right. The world's largest fossil fuel company actually assessed the damages of climate change um, as even greater than what the Obama administration had estimated, uh, $60 a ton. And in reality, if you talk wow. to scientists who are studying the impacts of climate change and assessing the real damage that's done, um, it's probably in the hundreds, hundreds of dollars of damage done to us, done to the environment, done to our economy, uh, when it comes to our health, when it comes to um, uh, national security, when it comes to uh, the spread of infectious diseases, uh, like we're dealing with now, um, all of these things, uh, the damage that's done by inaction is far greater than the dam than any cost of actually taking action. And that's where the, uh, you know, the Trump administration has tried to gain these calculations by lowballing um, estimates of the damage that's done. And, you know, this isn't uh, unique to them. Uh, you, uh, if you look at sort of the modern uh, campaign 
to forestall action on climate. It sort of moved away from outright denial because it's very difficult to claim that nothing's happening. And it's moved into sort of a, a softer form of denial. Um, this is what I call the new climate war in my upcoming book um, in January. And it's this evolution away from denying the uh, reality to basically denying the threat that it represents or deflecting attention from the real solutions, which is, you know, doing something about our fossil fuel burning. Um, it's just another way of kicking the can down the road and forestalling, delaying action on climate. Right. While they continue to extract fossil fuels and pump them into our atmosphere and, and make a pile of money doing it. It occurs to me that there, there may be a longer a longer term uh, strategy at work here, Dr. Mann. Uh, the the uh, you know, there, starting with Al Gore, really, with his campaign back 20 years ago, there was an effort to impose a, a tax on carbon. I mean, if, if carbon pollution is costing us, even if it's costing us a dollar a ton, you know, the, the Trump administration number uh, or fifty dollars a ton, the Obama administration number, and the one that's you know widely or sixty dollars a ton, what you know what Exxon Mobil said it costs. Um, shouldn't there be a tax that reflects that? I mean, it's very simple stuff. It's like one of the reasons why we tax alcohol higher than, than uh, you know, orange juice is because there's a social cost to alcohol. People get alcohol, you know, fatty liver disease, alcoholic cirrhosis, and they die. And, and you know, not to mention yeah. car accidents and everything else. So we try to recover some yeah. of those costs with a tax. We do the same thing with cigarette taxes. So if they're yeah. lowballing their estimate of what the cost of burning carbon is, doesn't that put them in a position where when it becomes, you know, when climate change becomes so, not just climate change becomes obvious, but the, the negative consequences become so obvious that every American gets it, yeah. you know, horrible tornadoes, floods, wildfires, all that kind of stuff. It's all getting worse literally every year. At some point, uh, there's going to be just an absolute consensus across America. This is totally screwed up. And we got to do something about this. Let's talk about a carbon tax. And this is their way of saying, okay, let's talk about a carbon tax. Let's start that conversation at a dollar a ton rather than $50 a ton. What do you think? Yeah, I think you put your finger on it, Tom. Uh, you know, the fossil fuel industry and, and those that are promoting their interests uh, aren't dumb. Uh, they see the writing on the wall. Uh, they uh, suspect, as the rest of us does, that this administration is coming to an end and Republican control of our government is coming to an end. And seeing that, they want to lay the groundwork um, when, you know, Democrats do uh, run Congress, when there's a Democratic president and we're ready to move forward um, in taking action on climate. They want to see that the table where they can pretend to be part of the legitimate conversation, where they can say, yeah, we, we think this is a problem and we should do something about it. And by the way, here's our proposal, a $1 tax uh, per, uh, you know, per ton of carbon. Um, and of course, uh, a carbon tax is just one way of pricing carbon, of forcing polluters to pay. And if we, you know, we do end up uh, adopting a carbon tax, it has to be done in a just way. We have to make sure that uh, frontline communities, those who are being most impacted by climate change, uh, don't have to pay inordinately. And so there's a, there's a social justice and a climate justice conversation to be had about how we go about pricing carbon to make sure it's done in a progressive uh, rather than a regressive way. And there are ways to do that um, when it comes to how you return the revenue. You can return the revenue uh, preferentially to frontline communities. Um, and sure. there are other ways of uh, incentivizing, you know, the shift away from fossil fuels, leveling the market so renewable energy can compete, uh, like subsidies for renewable energy. And so these are all sort of tools in the toolbox, pricing carbon, um, subsidies and incentives for renewable energy, um, doing something about the pipeline, the fossil fuel pipeline. Um, and we're seeing action there as well.